Hello everybody, so we're going live again today. Today is with my friend Lee Anderson, who's such an amazing guy and I really want to bring him on today to share some of his wisdom and knowledge with us all. So thank you everybody for coming on. Just bear with me one moment while I wait for a few people to jump on this live with me. Lee, here he is. Yes, we've got Lee coming on today. So Lee, if you just um, request to join my friend and I'll get you up. Here we go. Thanks everybody for coming on as well. Hello, mate. Bonjour. <laughs> How you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm good. The birds are singing. There is a sun above those clouds somewhere, so I'm hoping at some point it's going to come out. Yeah, man. I, and you, I mean, you got you got the the hoodie on for it as well, right? Oh, mate. Son, you know what? Sometimes a little bit of colour makes all the difference. Brightens the day. Sure does. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm good, Lee. I'm good, mate. Thank you. Very well. It's good to see you, mate. It's good to see you. Yeah, and, and likewise, you know, as well. Like for anyone that doesn't know, like our journey, Lee. What we've known each other for what a couple of years now, would you say? It's got a bit of that. At least two years now. God, yeah, a couple of years. A couple of years. Just say through Instagram, through through connecting with each other on social media, and. It's crazy, right? Like, the relationships that can be built through social media. Like, we've never met each other in person. No. But but I feel like, for me, like, I could reach out to you. Like, you're one of them people that I could just reach out to at any time in my life. If I needed to, say, ask anyone for anything or just, just to catch up. Like, you're definitely one of those people on my list there. Oh, mate, that's nice to know. I appreciate that. No, thank, oh, mate. thanks, mate. All right. Two seconds. My door is literally just gone. So just bear with me. <laughs> okay, mate. Okay, mate. Yeah. So, so guys, I'm just going to um, go over what we're doing today. So this is uh, another one of my interviews today. Um, and I'm with my friend here, like I say, Lee, who I've known for a couple of years through Instagram. Just going to have a conversation. I'm going to ask him a few questions as well about his life. Um, but yeah, like for me, like Lee, hopefully you can hear this. Like Lee for me is someone who is absolutely amazing at listening. And in life, like, I believe, like, in life, to speak, to be able to speak in life is such an amazing skill. But to be able to listen and then respond from what you've heard that person say, I think is such an art that could take years, in fact, to to master. And Lee is one of those people that I believe is such a good listener. So... Yeah, just bigging you up there, Lee. I hope you heard what I said about I, you. <laughs> I, I, I did. I heard all of that. I, I appreciate that. Listen, look, you know, in order to be heard, you have to listen. It's as simple as that. You know, we've all got something to say, but it's not only just our delivery and what we're saying, but it's also the ability to listen. Because sometimes we say things that we want to, we say things and we want to hear a certain thing back. That's not listening. You know what I mean? That's just saying... I want you to hear what I'm saying and tell me that I'm right. I want you to hear what I'm saying and tell me what I want and what I need to hear. And sometimes that's not what you need to hear. Sometimes you need to be called out. Sometimes you need to be told exactly how you... What was I going to say? Yeah, sometimes, you, yeah, listening is just... It's so important. So, so important. So I left my trailer fault then because I thought my door went again. That's okay, See? mate. So... I'm listening. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I think when you can say master or get really good at listening and sort of almost absorbing or extracting what that person's had to say and say, take it on board, people will, say, tell you all of their answers. Say if they're asking you a question, if they need help. Let's say, for instance, Lee, like you're a coach, right? So... I know when coaching clients, uh, you need to be able to listen. Yeah, of course you need to speak to them, but you really need to listen. And if you listen, if you listen hard enough, you'll get all of the answers from, say, that client because they know what's wrong with them. Like, you don't know, say, what's wrong with them or what they're going through in their life. But if you just really listen and take on board what they're saying... They're going to tell you every single one of their, their, say, issues or problems. Yeah, that's true. People will tell you everything and anything if you listen, you know. But there's a difference between listening and hearing. You know, I can hear what you're saying to me. 
but I need to be actually really connecting with you to actually listen because I will hear things that you say that you realise you're not saying because it's a habit to you. You know, it's it's normal. And, you know, being a coach is, there's a lot of things to being a coach, but one of them is to be able to show somebody what they're missing out on because they're not allowing themselves to see beyond what they keep reinforcing. You know what I mean? We only know what we know. Mm. That's it. And we only choose to listen and hear to what we want to. You know, we take in pieces of information that we feel benefit us purely because of the fact they look familiar, you know, they feel comfortable and it makes you feel safe. You know, we don't want to see beyond that. You know, we fear fear because we fear of what's beyond it. And it makes us scared of going through that fear to see what's beyond it. You know, curiosity. Curiosity is, is another reason to listen. I'm curious about you. You know, I want to know about you. Because there's something that you could say to me that's going to make me think, oh, actually, I didn't think about that, you know? And that's how we kind of exchange information is just by talking. But how it really, really works is by listening. Mm. And I mean, again, like when, when say, for instance, let's say, for instance, is a, is a client, a client says something, but you, you've listened to that, say, client, and you've heard what they've said, and you're thinking, hmm, I wonder if they could hear it from their own, say, point of view, or, or through their own voice. So if yeah. you just say, then tell that, say, individual exactly what they've just told you, but it's coming now from your voice, or, or from you, your point of view, they often just go, well, actually, I've never thought of it like that. You said, that's what you just told me. Like, I've just, yeah. just reflected exactly what you've said to me. So sometimes like, when you're in, in that jar, like you can't read the label, like you need to step out of the jar, whether it's somebody else um, tells you what you're telling yourself, you know? Yeah, that's so true. I mean, you know, in a session, there's a lot of power plays in. And, you know, it's, I will say, this is what I heard you say. And they say, well, I didn't say that. It's like, well, you just said that to me. So this is what I'm now paraphrasing back for you. Because a lot of people will, won't say what they think. You know, they'll say something but it's not what they're really thinking because they're kind of scared to say it because they don't know how it's got to be received do you understand what i mean and mm -hmm. so when people were talking to you in this environment in this capacity it's easy to pick up on things and go you just said this to me and they go no i didn't i said yeah you said you said this and again as i said you'll paraphrase and or it'll be i heard this is this what you meant and they'll say no i meant this and it's like well then say what you mean otherwise you're misleading somebody and you're misleading yourself yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's so, so important. And what you said there as well, like, you're misleading other people, but you're also misleading yourself. And I think that's so, so important. Like, the language that we use can literally shape our lives. Um, so, so, Lee, let's, let's get into this today. So, what I wanted to say, get you on board or get you on here today for, really, is just to share a little bit about your life, who you are, um, maybe what life looked like growing up for you, some of the challenges that you possibly come across, but what you had to do in order to get you to where you are today? Uh, where do you want to start, mate? Start at the start, Simply. mate. Start at the start. Yeah, start at the start. Uh, all right, so I moved to France four and a half years ago to create a life for myself because the life that I was leading back in the UK was destroying me. Um, but because I was living in that life and I'd made it a habit and that routine, I didn't see what was wrong with it. You know, I wouldn't listen to any advice. I wouldn't go and speak to people. I wouldn't do anything. I would just keep sabotaging and being very destructive. I was functioning, you know, let's put it that way. I was functioning, um, but slowly falling apart. And then we made the decision to go, you know what? Let's move. Let's go and do what we was planning to do in our retirement. Let's do it now. Let's not wait until we get too old that we can't do it. Let's go and enjoy it. So, yeah, I embarked on a career of transforming and shaping my life and giving myself what I need and understanding who I am and what what makes me tick and what I don't like and what I don't need, you know, and, and eradicating all the things that was adding no value to my life. Literally, places, people, items, all that stuff that just didn't give me anything. They were just there. They were just habit. Um, you know, you just kind of convince yourself that you need them. And then when you take yourself away from that and you come to an environment where it's pure, it's natural, it's organic, and it's so far removed from the, the, the massive light speed way of living um, in the UK, it gives you a chance for your brain to breathe. Um, and it allows, it allows me 
to put things into perspective and understand that I can pretty much do what I wanted if I set myself a realistic and achievable target. Um, and moving was one of those things. Moving changed my life in more ways than one. It really did. Um, it challenged me because the transition of moving from one country to another is okay physically, but mentally it's not because you don't prepare yourself for that. You know, you just think I'm going to go and have a, I'm going to go and have a better life than what I've got and it's going to be brilliant. Mm-hmm. I'm so used to running at 100 miles an hour trying to catch up with my brain that moving to a place that has given me space and has allowed me to breathe was hard. You know, I struggled, struggled mentally with it. And then I started to explore my mental health, you know, and I started to explore why I thought the way that I thought, why I behaved the way that I behaved, you know, and why I, and why I, I felt the way that I felt. Um, you know, because for me as a man, I suppressed my feelings for years, um, but it would come out in other ways. You know, I'd be very angry. Uh, I would shout to be heard because that was a learnt behaviour. Um, and I didn't find a way to communicate how I was feeling inside because I didn't know how to. So part of creating a new life is creating a better understanding of who you are, you know, becoming more self-aware and understanding what it is that you need to become the person that you're actually trying to create. And, and that's what moving gave me. It gave me an environment for me to grow. It gave me space to grow into there was no limitations there. Lee, cheers, mate. Thank you so much. And yeah, I mean, there was a few things that I sort of could pick away from that. I mean, the first thing that really stood out is about, say, how important environment is, right? Yeah. Because like, we're living in this world at the minute where everything is so super fast paced. Like everyone wants things and they want them now. They want that instant gratification. And I believe like many people even of all ages, all genders, races, etc. It doesn't matter who you are. You want something and you want it like that and you're not willing to wait. And I see people just making, say, risque decisions because they're not willing to, say, allow things to unfold or give things time to unfold. But also, I believe it's mainly down or due to, say, the environment, right? Because if you'll say, let's say for London, for instance, I went to London the other week to, to check it out for five days to see if I wanted to move into London. And it's so, so fast paced. Like everyone is moving at a million miles per hour. And I, I honestly believe like there could be, I don't know, like, there could be something really, say, I can't even give an example of it. Let's say, for instance, there could be like a block of gold on the floor that's worth like a million quid because people are moving so quick. They're not even paying attention. They're just like, in their little zones and they're just going like to where they're going. I'm just thinking some people need to give themselves a break. Um, but that's, that's what you mentioned as well. Like you, you was aware, like you had the awareness that you need to give yourself a break to have that say new environment to just go at say a different pace of life. Like just slow it down a little bit, give your brain some thinking time in order to decide what you truly wanted. But what I love as well, what you said, is that was almost like a retirement plan for you. Like, yeah, when we retire, we're going to move away. Let's just do it now. Mm. Like, what, what the fuck? Like, let's just do it now. Like, because nobody knows or nobody believes or majority of people don't actually believe that they might not actually see retirement. Like, that's just the facts. That's the reality of life. Like, I was saying this yesterday. I might not even ever get to 60, 70, 80 years old, like, of course I wish I want to be like 113 years old but the reality is something could happen to me tomorrow like it's crazy so why not do it now if you can figure a way out or or a way of how to do something that you really want to do in life now or uh, in a shorter period I mean I think it's a great thing so yeah Lee thank you yeah I think sorry to cut you there mate I think I think a lot of people get stuck in this misconception that you know especially with retirement that you retire from you don't, you know, you retire from your work, you retire from the job that you've held, you retire from the job that you believe is you, that makes you, and your job doesn't, you know, when, when I ask people like, who are you? They go, well, I do this for a living. I said, no, 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 I don't care what you do for a living. Who are you? Tell me about you. And when I ask people about, you know, their qualities, tell me three qualities about you. Tell me three qualities about you right now. Me, I love to listen. Okay. I love to speak. And yeah, I absolutely love to help people. 
Right. And the reason you know that is because you sat down and worked out what it is that, that you can offer. Yeah, people don't do that. People don't sit down and work out and go, actually, do you know what? My quality is I'm really good at writing. I'm really good at uh, uh, connecting with people. I'm really good at scripting stuff. You know, these are all qualities, but people don't see that. People look at qualities as something tangible that they can go, look, see, I did mm. that. And it's not, you know, you was part of that, but it doesn't make you who you are. We're so multifaceted, you know, and we're, and we're so so deep there's so many layers to us but we don't give ourselves enough chance and time to explore those do you understand what i mean you know one of the first things that, that happens as you start to prioritize stuff is you drop habits you drop things that you're interested in they're the things that help you learn and grow and develop because you have a healthy interest and you've emotionally connected to them and when you don't emotionally connect to something you know give it your all you don't care you're not invested in it do you understand what i mean you know, mm. like I said earlier on about moving to France, I was moving because it was, I was changing my life, but I wasn't emotionally connected to it. I was still trying to put a square peg into a round hole and it weren't working, but I couldn't work out what it was. So I was always then thinking to myself, maybe the house is too big, maybe it's in the wrong area. No, me, I had to adjust to it. I had to adapt. I had to become flexible. I had to allow myself to actually bed in and understand that my life has changed, but it's what I wanted it to be. I just lost sight of that, you know, I lost sight of that. And I think for a lot of us, we just kind of get into a habit of just accepting, well, it's just the way that I am, you know, that's just what I do. No, it's not, it isn't. That's just an excuse that's preventing you from moving on. That's an excuse that keeps you tied to where you are. You know, if you really want to do something, sit down and ask yourself why, how you're going to achieve it, how it's going to make you feel, what it looks like. Because once you know that, you're starting to invest in it emotionally. Do you know what I mean? You give it a fair crack of the whip. When you fall at that first hurdle, you go, right, why did that happen? Not like, oh dear, look, I told you, I told you I was going to fall. It was typical of me, you know what I mean? So then you just, that loop all the time. I'm no good, I can't do, I shouldn't, I wouldn't, I can't. Do you know what I mean? They're all words that stop us. They all prevent us from moving forward. But when you go, I can't yet, because this happened. So let me change that and do something else. I shouldn't do that. Why shouldn't I do it? Oh, I don't know, actually. I've just led myself to believe that I shouldn't. Well, actually, give it a go. You know what I mean? There are lessons to be learned in failure. Embrace it, because without failure, you can't have success. Balance is always a choice. Give yourself a choice. If you don't give yourself a choice, what you're doing really is pretty much restricting your growth. Yeah, mate. Again, I, I love that, Lee. And a few things, again, that really stood out for me was how many people, they, they tie their identity with, say, their job, their home, like their living situation, their car, their, their materialistic items, watch. Like, you, you are not your watch. You are not your job. Like, for instance, for me, it used to be like, and I, I've only just learned, really, only over the last, say, six, seven, eight months or whatever, to sort of break away from this. Me, who are you? Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I, well, I am a mechanic. Well, I sort of was a mechanic. No, I'm not. I am me. Like, I'm Ryan Nurse. There's only one of me. <laughs> so don't tie your identity with, People, jobs, uh, and things. like You are not those things. You are you. But also, mm. never... Never... I'm just trying to think of the word that I'm going to use here now. Um, so the first word that comes into your mind. Yeah, about patterns. Patterns, that's the word that I'm trying to think of. Like, we quite often... Again, it's just about, about patterns in our lives. Say, say, for instance, people say, like, I am lazy. I am stupid. They're just patterns. But like, never scripts. identify yourself with a pattern. Like, I They're am scripts. lazy. No, you may have been lazy, whatever lazy. You may have just put off something in your life, but you are not lazy. You can decide yeah. to change. Like, you, can, you can change that anytime you want. That's just a little pattern that you've, you've made up. And now you're, say, identifying yourself with that pattern. Yeah, and I think what happens is is that we look for reinforcement. So if someone tells us we're shit or something, we believe it because someone else has told us that, especially someone else that's in a, an environment or a field that specialises in that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not the greatest at IT, but I'll give it a go. You know, I'm not an IT ex expert, but I'm not stupid. I can work myself around a bit of social media and build a website. 
But I had to sit down and learn that. But I had to learn it in a way that I could take in information. Do you understand what I mean? You could sit there and go, if you do this, this, this. No, mate, I need you sitting here with me. So I had to then adapt my way of learning in order to get what I needed. But I gave myself permission to do that rather than going, well, I can't do that. It's difficult. All right, get up, walk away, come back, approach it again. Approach it with a different perspective. My aim now is to sit down and work out this much rather than this much. I'm working within my capabilities. Do you understand what I mean? Um, going back to what you said about patterns, we do look for patterns. We look for patterns because it makes us understand things. You know, patterns of behavior, learn behavior. You know, we learn things from the minute that we can take in information, we're, we're learning. That doesn't mean to say that information is correct or that information benefits you, but it's in information that's passed on from others to you that helps them. So therefore it can help you. But sometimes it can be damaging. Yeah, but we don't realise it because we've normalised that behaviour and we've accepted it. And it's only when you get to a certain age that you start challenging those things and you go, well, why the fuck do I believe that? Why is that limiting me? You know, why, why do I adopt to those values and really they're not in line with me? You know, why do I believe that I can't do something because someone's told me that? But yet I've reinforced that. I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the story about the... Um, uh, What's that fucking cake? The one that looks like an iceberg. It's crunchy on the outside, chewy in the middle. Meringue. Meringue, yeah. Yeah, meringue. yeah. I, had, I had meringue once, right, and I hated it. And I remember when I first started seeing Mark, it was like, we used to go out for dinner, and he was like, try a bit of meringue. I was like, no, I don't like it. It's disgusting. He's like, just try it. I was like, no, I don't like it. He's like, why don't you like it? I was like, I just don't like the texture. And then one day he was out, and he was like, look, just try this meringue for me, please. If you don't like it, I'll never ask you again. So I tried it. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, how do I say this to this? I loved it. Because it was presented in a different way. You know what I mean? It was made differently. You know, it looked different. The texture was different, but it was still a meringue. I just didn't allow myself to have a choice to try it. Because mm -hmm. I reinforced that narrative of, because I didn't like it, I'm never going to like it. And that's where we prevent ourselves from, 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 from doing things. Because we've held something so true that it's actually become part of our life script and it's not it's bollocks yeah mate i love that and um what popped to mind there for me like i heard someone say a while back always doubt your doubts mm. like for instance like oh i doubt that i like that so i'm not ever going to try it again or or i had this memory from when i was like half a year old that I didn't like it. No, you don't. You, you just make this stuff up in your mind. Like, just go and try it. Like, you, you... And to be fair, like, we're changing. We're constantly changing as people, yeah. right? Like, change is good. I'm not the same person as I was yesterday. Like, no. my body is physically not the same. I, I am changing. You are changing. We're all changing. Change is good. So it gets to a point in your life, like, say, for instance, off the top of my head, let's say uh, curry, for instance. Oh, when I was little, I, I, didn't, I didn't like curries. Now I absolutely love curries. Like you change, your taste buds change. Um, just every single thing about you changes, right? <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I just think, look, for me personally, it's down to you. You know what I mean? You, you stick or twist. You know, you put your red foot. You put your, you know, your, your left foot on the red circle. And, you know, it is a game of life. Um, hmm. But it, it, it all comes back to you. It all comes back to you. You know what I mean? Um, and and for me. As a person, I couldn't live like that anymore. I, I was, I was, I was not giving myself the opportunity to make the correct, wholesome, healthy choices. I was just choosing something because it, I'd convinced myself it was going to take me a place that was away from where I was, and it was very, very destructive. Uh, you know, when I gave up drinking, I, I made so many attempts before to give up drinking, but they weren't for me. It wasn't about me. Do you know what I mean? And when I started to actually make things about me and start giving myself what I needed for me, things changed. Now, they really did. Um, you know, when you come from a life where you're, you have a habit of getting up at a certain time, going to work, coming home and all that, and then all of a sudden you don't have that, that's hard to adjust to because you have to make yourself accountable. You've got to then start to put in routines and habits and structure that you know that you can rely on because then it helps you get through the day do you know what I mean so plan things and, and having a good morning routine and, 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 and an evening routine 
Like, it was just kind of like, for me, getting home from work, having dinner, vegging on a Saturday, and then, you know, going to bed and getting up and repeating it again, waiting for the weekend to come out so I can just go out and get absolutely mauled. Um, and it's only when you come away from that, and I actually sat down with myself and I was like, why did I do that? And it's because I hated being me, because I didn't understand who I was. You know, and I, I was just going through the motions of just existing. And, and that's not cool, because there's so many things that you miss out on, um, because you're just surviving. You know, and there's a lot of people out there, from the minute they get up, life is challenging. From the minute you open your eyes, like I noticed when I was back in the UK, from the second I opened my eyes, I just felt like I was just playing catch up, but I had nothing to do. But that's just the environment I was in that made me feel like that. You know, that I was looking at people that were driving around in expensive cars and getting car envy, but then going, actually, it's just because I'm here. You know, when I'm back home, it doesn't bother me. You know, my walking boots have got the biggest holes in them, but they're comfortable and they get me around the fields. But if I was in London, I wouldn't wear them because I was scared of what people say about me. So I was, under, I was, I was able to understand those differences and how they impacted me and how they impacted me mentally as well. Because I was stressed over things that had nothing to do with me, purely because of the fact I was in that environment. You know, and when I come here, you know, it's almost like someone just completely took my rucksack, ditched all the shit that I'd taken of my own and gone, now, now fill it with your own shit. It's just, you know what I mean? So it gave me that opportunity to really see that, do I miss London? I miss being in London. I don't miss living in London. I don't miss London life. I like to now just be a visitor because I choose to be. And that's the difference. Mate, that was brilliant. And what what I took from that bit there was that the environment, without even realising it, and I believe this happens to every single one of us, without even realising, we compare ourselves to other people depending on our, on our environment. Like for instance, you go to London and you're looking at people with their Gucci's, their Louis Vuittons and uh, their Rolexes and, and their nice fancy flash cars. And you're thinking in your mind without even realising, why haven't I got one of them? Why am I not that person? Why am I not more mm. like that? But then you come yeah. back to the, the environment that you actually love and enjoy, and that's where you really live. And you take your dog for a walk. Are you going to walk your dog in a pair of four or five hundred pound Gucci trainers? No, you're not in a muddy field, are you? So that, that, yeah. that, that need or desire or want for that sort of shit, because it is shit, it just, it just wipes away, it fades away because you don't have anybody else to say, look at when you're walking through a field with your dogs and you're just living life and enjoying that moment, being in the present moment, you've got no need for anything else because there, there isn't that environment around you because you are just you and you are whole in that environment. So yeah, and I really love that as well, Lee. Cheers, man. Um, yeah, I just, I just for, for me personally, I just wanted to be me. That's all I ever wanted. You know, from, from, from when I was a teenager, you know, where I, my, you know, I was my mum's son and my, and my sister's brother, I was never me. And all I ever wanted was just to be me. Do you know what I mean? But when you live a life that you just kind of conform and you are following expectations and, you know, you're doing what is classed as normal, you lose your identity, parts of it. Because if not given the opportunity to blossom and grow you've not been given an opportunity to explore it and understand it you know and we're all trying to navigate life the best way that we can and it's fucking hard man it's like being on the krypton factor sometimes do you know what i mean it really is mm -hmm. but for those that succeed it's about committing to the process you know it's not about i need to finish this it's like right let me do the best that i can to get around this assault course do you know what I mean? Because we're all we're all equipped differently. We've all got different skills and talents, so we're not all the same, and that's why we're unique. That's why we've all got different DNA. Do you know what I mean? But I forget sometimes. I just think sometimes we just forget that we're not the person that we are trying to copy. Mm. We've got our own blueprint, and we need to make sure that we focus on that. You know, and 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 giving that some context and giving it you know, some clarity. Yeah, like, I honestly believe, Lee, like, we're all born ourselves, but most die someone else. 
because without even realising, we're comparing our chapter one to somebody else's chapter ten. Yeah. So just realise like in that. life, in life, winners focus on winning, but losers focus on winners. So you need to focus on what you really want out of your life and just stay in your lane. Yeah, 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 definitely. And also to caveat that, mate, I think also it's the people that you surround yourself with. One of the big mm. things that I've taken away from social media is the connections that I've made because I've made those choices to connect with those people because they've said, written, posted something that connects with me and is in line with my values and where I see myself because we're always growing. Like every day we grow, like you said, we're different to the person we were yesterday. So if you kind of always think about a growth mindset as in like, it's about moving on, it's about expanding, it's about understanding that there's more knowledge out there for us to attain. Do you understand what I mean? So that we're going to grow and we're going to gravitate towards that. And then it's the same thing with people. You know, we gravitate towards people that are just as like-minded, that are either where you are, so then you can elevate yourself and start leveling your ass up. And they've got something to offer you. But at the same time, your confidence comes from the fact that you have something to offer them. And that's where you start to think to yourself that actually I am worthy, you know, and your self-confidence goes up and your self-esteem goes up, you know, because you're sharing with an environment that accepts you for where you are and has met you where you are and wants to help you elevate to where they are. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, mate, I, I, I love that. And I was thinking this morning, actually, because, you know, I love my quotes and all this sort of stuff. And I, I thought yeah, one a while back. Oh, don't. I may, I may have heard this or I may have say I've adjusted it. I can't even remember, to be fair. But I'm just trying to figure out what one it is now. But it's just sparked me there. And it says, in life, the right. No, right. Bear with me. In life. <laughs> Here we go. Let's start again. Right. Start again. Edit that one out, people. <laughs> right. <laughs> Take two. Take two, yeah, here we go. Right. So, in life, the wrong person would think that you're shit, even when you think you're at your very best. But the right person would think you are the best, even when you know you're at your very worst. So it's yeah, all about environment. Like, because if someone hates on you or someone doesn't want to say acknowledge the things that you're doing in your life or like how courageous you are to go after what you want etc they're always going to play you down and make you feel shit because they're jealous because they're not doing it themselves mm, but if you're actually yeah. going after what you want and you're surrounding yourself with other people that say want the best out of their lives you don't see anyone that's say, say better or, or on that next level to you slagging people off they don't do it yeah. because they're focused on their journey moving forward. And all they want to do is bring other people up with them. Like, leaders create more leaders. Yeah, listen, mate, look. Let's just be honest there. There's some proper pricks out there. You know what I mean? They're pricks. Let's just put them into the prick box. And then there's people that will say <laughs> things about you because they don't know how to deal with your change, with your progression, with your transition. They don't understand it because they're so used to you being a certain way. So then when you start mm. to move on and you start to grow, they're kind of like, well, what the fuck? You know, what's your problem? You know, why are you doing this? But what they're really saying to you is, is that, oh, my God, I can't handle this. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I've relied on you. I need you. You know, don't go off and do you because I need you so I can do me. Yeah, Co it's coexisting. And then mm. there's the people that kind of go, actually, do you know what? I need to go out and do something for me. I need to go out and do what I need to do. And they don't look behind them because they're trailblazers. They're kind of like, look, let's just put all my eggs in one basket and see what the fuck happens. Because if we don't, we're not going to know. Do you understand what I mean? And so there's always, always going to be people that hate on you because they don't understand. They're not in that space. Their mind's not in the same place as yours. And they're probably happy where they are. But really, deep down, they're not. They wish they could do more, but they just don't know how to. And that's where the likes of you and I come in. Because we can go, look, these are the things that you're doing that don't work. We will repeat offending the same habits and, and routines that really don't work for you anymore. You know, they did years ago, but now they're redundant. We need to now show you how to employ new ones that are going to get you to go and join your mate that's moved on. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, I love that. And, and so many people, Lee, you know, they're, they're, they're frightened by change. Like, it's, it goes back to those crabs in the bucket. Like, we all heard the crabs in the bucket. There's always that one crab that so it makes his way up the bucket and about to go over the edge, 
to go into their new life and then the rest of the crowd just drag them straight back down. And they're like, oh, what? Oh, maybe I should just stay here. Maybe I should just stay in this little comfort zone where I'm at because everything's okay. It's not that bad. And then you start believing your own bullshit. Mm. Mm. You need Listen, to break away. Action. Action's action regardless of what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's still action. But mm. at the end of the day, it's, it's working out what works and what doesn't. Mm. It's positive and what's negative. Listen, mate, I get plagued by insecurities. I get plagued by self sabotage. I get plagued by, 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 um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, God. Procrastination. These things plague me. They have done for years. I do comparisons. I compare myself to other people because I'm in the middle of something that I don't know. So, therefore, what I'm going to do is look for things that, that make me feel safe. And those four things make me feel safe. I can deal with self sabotage. I can deal with, comparing myself i can deal with procrastination you know and i can deal with my negative thoughts because they're familiar to me but what they what but for me to really take charge and connect with them is go right i know why i'm feeling this way because i'm in a place i've never been before so rather than reaching out for support within that area and that space i'll just revert back to time and that's where you learn. That's where you start to understand. Ah, oh, there's a pattern of behavior there that doesn't work. Let me change that. And, you know, patterns of behavior is all about practice. It's repetition. Every day you have to get up and do it. So then it becomes to a point where it becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. So when you're going through something and you find yourself in a space you've never been, keep going, man, because it's what's beyond that is what is waiting for you. Do you know what I mean? When you step back... It's not a bad thing. It just means that you're just not ready to commit that little bit further yet. But just acknowledge and recognise that you're going in the right direction. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with changing direction. If it doesn't work for you, change direction. You know, you might have committed to the process, but your outcome can always change. Mm, and uh, you said the word repetition early, and I believe like repetition is everything. Because it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but it's what we do consistently. And yeah, like there were so many little nuggets that you just dropped there. <laughs> oh, I can't even remember which one to go go for in a minute. <laughs> like, you know, there were so you know so many little ones. You know but it was and sometimes and sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes no, no, I know, it's but it's there to be said. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no. So yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, it's repetition, right? Repetition is so important because so many people think they're just going to do something once and become, say, a master at whatever that is, whatever skill that may be. But it's, it's showing up every day. But I believe, like, your next level of life is at the centre of discomfort. Yeah, uh, uncertainty. Un uncer sorry, Lee. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, like, no uncertainty. Problem. At the centre of uncertainty is where that magic is. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen... A magician's got a hat that's got a rabbit in it. He knows that his trick is to pull that rabbit out of that hat and make you smile. We're all sitting there, half of us are hoping, he ain't got no fucking rabbit in that hat. And the other half <laughs> hoping, oh my God, what's going to happen? But either way, his head is focused on taking that rabbit out of that hat. Mm. That's his purpose for that show. We're there to be entertained. Do you know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, sometimes we forget that, that you need to have fun. There has to be an element of fun that you have to enjoy what you're doing because then again, you connect with it more on a level. What we do is hard. You know, it, it, people kind of think it's kind of bougie and, 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 and this and that. It's not, mate. It's all based on experience, both personal and professional. Anyone can find any bit of information and it will, you know, it will connect with somebody. It doesn't mean to say that it's correct. It doesn't mean to say that it's right. You know, we all look for things. But like you said, it's about repetition. But it's also understanding that when it doesn't work, it doesn't mean you fail, but it means it just isn't right for you. You know, it's like marriage. You know, we get married. At the beginning, it is. This is my soulmate. I'm going to be for the rest of life. But then you start to grow as people, right? And if you don't grow together and allow the space to grow, you grow in different directions. And then what happens is you just don't fit anymore. You don't work anymore. And that's not a bad thing. It just means that you're looking for something different. But remember that experience you have with that person is something you're going to carry for the rest of your life. You know, it really is. But we don't set out to do things and, you know, to destroy them at the end of them. We set out to do things because it's the right things for us to do. But sometimes the right things are not the right thing for us.
we just have to be allowed. We just have to allow ourselves to be open and going. You know what? Can I just stop the bus and get off? This is going in the wrong direction. I think I should be going on that one over there, and that's cool. You know, it really is. Yeah, I mean, I put a I put an Instagram story up earlier, and I can't remember what it said, but it said something like this: Lee, you know, every opportunity in life. No, every experience in life presents an opportunity <laughs> to find out what you do want and what you don't want, right? Yeah. And it's so yeah. true. Like, you could go down and say, this path in life, I think this is what I really want. But then you can get halfway down it and say, actually, no, this isn't what I want. But having the awareness to make the decision to then change that path and go on a, on a different path, it's, it's okay to turn around. Like, you could have been going in the wrong direction for, say, your whole life so far. But it's never too late to just say, actually, this isn't for me. Turn around and go the opposite way. Like so many people feel like, and me, for instance, as well, I was on this track too. I thought because I was on that pathway to where I was going, that was the only path for my life. Like there's so many paths and you make your own paths as well. No, that's, that's, it's true, mate. Look, I just think for me personally, I've got to a point that, you know, come on man I made like two attempts on my own life because of the fact that it just wasn't right to seem the only option for me and I'm so far away from that now because I'm doing my shit for me and I'm able to serve other people to help them serve themselves and the pleasure that I get out of that is just limitless you know people f foul to surprise me in a good way because people don't realise just how fucking incredible they are. You know, they just don't get it or they just don't believe it. And I will happily bang their drum until I break that fucker and they get it because I know what it was like for me. Do you know what I mean? I know what it's like for me. I've never walked in your shoes and I never will walk in your shoes, but I need to understand my experiences before I can sit down and go, here's your space. You know what I mean? Tell me what's going on in your life and let me see what I can do to help you help yourself. That's it. Lee, mate, it's been amazing. So what I've got is five questions. Are you happy to go ahead with these questions? And we're, we're blitz through them before we end this today. Come on, let's do it. Right, so the first one is, what is the best piece of advice that you have ever received and why? Um, the best piece of advice I ever received was from myself this morning when I was brushing my teeth, looking at me and going, good morning, mate, you've got this. Yeah, I love that. And briefly, just from that, briefly talk to us why it's so important to have that positive self-talk. Because for me personally, from my experience, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I will think about what happened yesterday, what happened in my dream, and I will, I will latch onto the negative thoughts. But then I'd reinforce that throughout the day. Whereas now, my morning routine is pretty much, I'll get up, I will put the coffee on, I will go upstairs, I will have a wash, I'll brush my teeth and go, morning, mate, you've got this. Go and have your coffee, allow your body, your mind, your soul to wake up, right? Any thoughts that come into your mind, just let them drift. Let them come in and let them come out. Right? Remember what you're doing. You're allowing yourself to wake up from sleep. So I'll sit there, I'll look out into my garden, I'll drink my coffee, I'll listen to the birds, and then I'll go upstairs, I'll get dressed, and I'll get my dogs out. And then I'll start making some random videos. Because what it's doing is it's allowing me to get the shit out that's going to consume me for the rest of the day going forward, and it will dictate my mood. Now, sometimes, don't get me wrong, man, them little fuckers come out and they dictate my day. But it's very rare. Whereas before, it was constantly all the time. Whereas now, for me, I'm able to choose. I'm able to edge out the stuff that doesn't work. And I'm able to go, actually, do you know what? Today, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to stick to what I planned last night for my day. And I'm going to carry on. I'm going to do that. And that's how it works for me now. You know, but it works for me like that. It's to give, my time, give myself time and space in the morning to give myself what I need. And then I can just go through my day. You know, go through my day. Yeah, mate, I, I believe, like, we have to be our biggest cheerleader or supporter in life, too, like, with that positive self-talk. But I also believe, like, you can really shape your day from your morning routine. Because if you start the your day off right... It's so important. Mm. It's, it's, it's so important. You know, I was one of these people that, when I used to go to work, I'd get up, I'd snooze, hit me down, hit me down, hit me down, hit me down, get up, quickly get dressed, bit of toast in my mouth, in my car, driving, trying to drive down the road, mate. And I was always playing catch-up. 
always playing catch up with my day, and it's fucking exhausting. That's just for the that's for, just for the morning. You think about all those things you've got to do in that day, all those tasks, all those jobs, all that work, all those challenges you've got on top of the fact that you literally have opened your eyes and hit the ground running. It catches up with you, mate. That shit will burn you out. So mm. you need to get up with the intention of giving yourself what you need first in order to go and perform in your day. Even if you're only performing at 100%, give it 100% of that 40%, mate, and you're doing your best. Work within your capabilities, but make sure it starts and ends with you. Yeah, man. So, so true, mate. And, um, yeah, you can't, you can't live life in reaction mode all the time. Um, so the second question, Lee, would be, what is the worst piece of advice that you have ever received and acted on, and what was the result? <laughs> There's a lad, so many of these. Um, I think for me, the worst piece of advice I've ever taken is, do you know what? It's not believing in yourself. I think for me, I years, the old person that I was would latch onto all my negative thoughts because I believed that constantly. Because I was, if I was constantly thinking that, therefore I must be it. So therefore you are what you think. Do you understand what I mean? And it's only when you start to allow yourself to go, well, hang on a minute. Let me just see what this is like. And then what it does is it allows you to kind of, to have choices. Look, I fuck up, you know, I have negative thoughts, but I also have positive thoughts and I achieve and I'm, and, I, and I'm successful. But I never told myself that because I never allowed myself to believe that. But I believe that now. And do you know why? Because I take time to sit back and reflect. You know, I've gone through a lot of, things in the last couple of months and it's allowed me to put things into perspective and it makes me realize that i'm very very lucky and i'm very very blessed and i'm very very grateful but also i thank myself for getting myself here because it was me that did it it was me that reached out it was me that spoke it was me that went through all that stuff it was me that stood in the middle of that storm and went one day it's going to stop do you know what i mean because it does you just have to allow yourself to believe that it does because then you can start to put things in place to actually achieve that and those actions that you do are what is going to be what carries you through you know what i mean and um, if you're going to criticize yourself hype yourself up be your hype man as well but criticize yourself for the right things don't just do it because it's a natural knee-jerk reaction you know do it because of the fact that you've done wrong and you need to learn from it. You know, every lesson that we learn is something we're going to understand more about ourselves. But we have to give ourselves the opportunity to embrace that. I just went off on a tangent then. Did you see that? That was good, mate. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. In my head, I was going, hang on a minute, where am I going with this? You know what I mean? I just got to bring it back again. <laughs> no, it was good. It was good, mate. What was the question? So the question was, the question was, the question was, what was the worst piece of advice that you've received and acted on? But I mean, that answer was brilliant. So yeah, no, mate, well done for that. So, so let's, let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. So, I mean, the next one is about, say, unlearning things from, say, childhood, growing up, etc. And like we spoke about it earlier, like beliefs. They come from, say, other people, whether it's childhood programming, friends, environment. That's where our beliefs come from. But then our values, nobody really knows where our values come from. Like, they, they are all unique to us. And they come from, say, within, I guess. Um, um, so what... Go on. Yeah, go, yeah no, I was just going to say, so what did you have to unlearn growing up, Lee? I had to unlearn a lot of destructive habits. I had to unlearn a lot of things that I told myself about myself. I, I had to unlearn a lot of things that I didn't love about me and I had to replace them with, with love for me. I had to replace with, I had to accept who I was. You know, I had to do that in order to move forward because if you don't accept who you are, where you are, you're not going to move forward because you're always going to have one foot straddling in the past. And you know, you can't build shit in the past. Do you know what I mean? It's already been built. You know, it's history for a reason. And, and so for me, I had to unlearn a lot of destructive behaviours, but I also had to unlearn a lot of things that I was telling myself that other people had told me and I just thought that it was real, you know, and values, I think values come from the people that you surround yourself with, i.e. your parents instill your values into you. You just challenge them when they thought, mm -hmm. I don't know if I feel this way. Do you understand what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and I think for me, I had to 
habits and, and, and routines were huge for me because I had a lot of routines in place that just didn't work. You know, they didn't work for me. I just did it because other people did it. You know, I'd go out with my mates and get drunk because they did it. I'd done it to be accepted. You know, I'd done it to fit in. I didn't do it because I enjoyed it. But then what happened with that, the fallout to that was that I relied on alcohol then to give me confidence and to give me and to become the person that I wanted to become but just didn't do it because I was conforming in order to be accepted. Do you see how that works? Mm. But really, all I should be doing really is accepting me accepting me for who I am because when I can accept then I can be me like literally be me I mean I'm, I'm fucked up but in a good way you know I'm funny in a funny way but I'm also funny in a dark dry kind of way you know I accept all those things about me I'm never going to say the right thing at the right time all the time I'm never going to say the right the what the good you know the wrong thing at the wrong time it's just how it is but what I say is for me then to understand outwardly but also to learn from and to be corrected or praised. So I'm like a puppy, you know, tell me to sit and I sit, but I want a fucking reward for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm just in, I'm joking. <laughs> Mate, uh, what I want to say for that is, like you said, I am fucked up. Like, we're all fucked. We're all fucked up. Oh, yeah, but I embrace like, that and I own that. Like, I think when you own that, it doesn't hurt you. Do you understand mm. what I mean? Like, so I am, if, like I said to you right at the beginning, we're all multifaceted. Embrace that. Because there's still things about you that you don't even know and that you've not even learned yet. But if you don't embrace where you are and accept where you are, then the fuck are you going to learn all that stuff? You ain't. Because you've already blocked yourself. Yeah, I, I was doing some writing the other day, actually. I think it was on my laptop. I was, writing, I was writing some stuff down and I wrote, we are all beautiful messes. Because like, we're all that, fucked up in some sort of way. We're all beautiful messes. Like, nobody is perfect. If you're trying to live your life in order to be perfect at something, you're going down the wrong path because nobody is perfect. Nobody should ever strive or thrive or whatever the word is to, to be perfect. Like, because perfect is not a great place to be. Just imagine if you were perfect at something, that means there is no more room for improvement or for growth. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 100%, right? So, Lee, the next one would be, after that one, what is the greatest lesson that you have learned from your most painful life experience? Don't unpack that. Because you're not staying there. You learn to grow around it. You know, I've recently lost my mum, and it's hard because it's something that's there. It is it binds you, you know, it binds you to other people, but she's my mum, I love her, I miss her dearly, 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 but it will get easier, I know it will get easier, I don't know how long it will take, but I know and I believe in my heart that it will get easier, and I just, I'm just allowing myself to catch my feels, to cope, and to just roll with it, you know, not stopping myself, so the biggest lesson to learn is the fact that you know, you're never really going to stay in one place long enough. It might seem that this is your life forever, but it's not. You know, the minute that you take action, you take ownership of who the fuck you are. And I will swear that because of the fact that it's that impactful. When you take control of that, that, you know, that's the biggest lesson for me is, is that you're not there forever. You know, don't unpack yourself there. You know, don't make any roots. Just go through it experience it, reach out, talk about it, you know, don't keep it to yourself. Um, because it's important that you, it's important that you share with people because it alleviates some of the pain. You know, it really does. And, and it makes it easier for you, it makes it easier for me to understand it more when I say it out loud. And Rob's on here. Rob, again, we met on, on Instagram and I'll give, a, give I'm gonna give Rob his props out. You know, and we formulated this relationship. Um, he's my friend. You know, he's not my mate. He's my friend. And I love him dearly because he's, he's helped me so much in these last couple of months that he doesn't even understand how. And, 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 and that, by allowing myself to be opened, allows me to get the support that I need. And, and, and that's, that's one of the most important things that I've learned was for years I kept myself to myself because I didn't know who it was and how to deal with it. And as I said to you at the beginning, it almost destroyed me. But I understand now that 
that's sharing in whatever capacity you feel comfortable with helps you. It really helps you to lean into those places in your life that you find hard and painful to deal with. Mate, so I'm going to start with this. Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Because so many of us feel the need to stop and unpack all of our shit there, all of our bags, and sit in that fucking shit. But if you're going through a shitty time in your life, why the fuck do you want to pack your bags and start staying in that? It's going to stink, it's going to smell, it's going to be horrible. Keep going. Because just know this, you need to go through the shit in your life in order to get to the shiny stuff. Mm. It's going to be shit. Like, nothing comes easy in life. And that's why no people, many people say just live these lives sort of uncomfortably comfortable and so unhappily happy. Like, they think they're happy, but they're not. They're sort of sat in that shit and they're not willing to keep pushing. So it could only be a few more steps and you could be out the other side. So don't stop where you are. Keep moving. But then you also mentioned Lee, and there's Lucy. Lucy, you told me that one on one of that our was, Zooms. That was, Never, that was ever quote. unpack your bags in the shit and set yeah, up that camp. That's what quote. you said, Lucy. So thank you, Lucy. And you actually, come on you know at the right what? time I, as well. Yeah, so I the truth to actually, she was, that was a really, really valid piece of advice that I think we all took, or took a lot away from. You know what I mean? Mm. No, it definitely was. So yeah, Lucy, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you come on just as I said that. So the other thing, Lee was about telling other people, right? Telling other people how you truly feel. Because say, for instance, let's, let's put it this way. Everyone's had a, McDonald, a McDonald's, I'm sure. So if I went to McDonald's and said, oh, could I have a, a, a beef burger, a, a, a Big Mac, let's say, for instance, and they give you a Big Mac because that's what you are, you've asked for. And then you sit down and you open the box and you go, well, I don't even like Big Macs. I wanted a, I wanted a chicken burger. But you've told that person what you wanted. So you need to, to be open in life. You need to tell people how you truly feel. And I'm not saying go and tell any, anybody, but there's so many people out there that do want to hear you and do want to listen to you. And you need to be vulnerable. But what is vulnerable? Lee, you told me this one. Vulnerability is just being your true, authentic self. The self that you're too scared sometimes to show other people. But just know this, there is so much strength within vulnerability and I believe when you become vulnerable is when the true healing happens. Because not only do you begin to start to heal yourself even more, but you also open yourself up and allow a space for others to begin to say, start healing themselves through the light that you're shining to the world. Yeah, but totally also, do. just remind, or remember this. Don't share from the open wound, but share from the scar. And the more that you share your journey, the more you're going to heal that scar even more. So just open up like we've done here. I'm sure both of us have managed to take a lot away from just this, say, vulnerable conversation today, you know, Lee? Yeah, definitely. And um, I just want to add to that as well, that look, we're all healing from our past. You know, our past was a minute ago. You know, it really was. And I think that we kind of focus on the big things that happened in our life. And yes, they happened. But don't let them drive you to where you're going. Because what you're going to do is go back in full circle and go back to it, you know, and you want to try and make amends for it or you want to try and recreate it or change it. You can't, but you can learn from it. You know, that past is there for a reason. It's there to remind us where we come from, what we've been through, what we've overcome and where we don't want to go back to. Yeah. And so really what you're saying to us is it's finished. You keep going forward. You keep trying to understand. You just be you. And to those of you that don't like it, welcome. And for those of them that do, acknowledge them and just go about your business. Yeah, to that I'd say, you know, don't ever let your past negatively affect your future. And I also say this one, you know, don't ever let the best days of your life be in your past, ever. Because as long as your heart's still beating and as long as you're still alive, you can make the best days of your life that they're still to come, right? So don't ever let the best day of your part life be in your past. No, they've gone. They've finished. They have, they've happened. Didn't it, was one of your questions, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? That's the next question. So I'm going to say, is it? Lee, <laughs> know, knowing what you know now, what one piece of advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? 
<laughs> so I, I, I've been asked this question before and I'll give you the same answer over and over again. I need you. I need my 20 year old self. I need my 20 year old self to go through what he's going through because it will help me create balance for the person that I'm becoming. Because I'm going to be going through trials and tribulations in my life, but I'll refer back to times when I've been through that to use that to go through it. And so, so much on your old self, I need you. I, I need you to keep doing what you're doing because you're going to pass the baton on to me and I'm going to pass the baton on to my future self. So keep doing what you're doing. You're doing an amazing job. I know it's hard, but you got it. Wow, mate. Powerful. Super powerful, Lisa. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And yeah, I hope everybody that's listened in today has managed to take a lot away from this conversation because I know I have as well. And I know we're friends, we're mates, yes, whatever quite... you want to call us. Like, we, we, Yeah, we're, we're friends, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. We, can ju- we can jump on a call at any time. But this is a different, say, again, this is like a different environment. Having this, say, more is it like a formal conversation would you say um it's scary like, like, it's yeah scary. It, I, I was like i was getting excited i was getting nervous i was getting anxious i was like oh my god but you know what and you kind of have a misconception a preconception of what you think it's going to be like don't you you know you're like it's going to be an interview it's going to be so and so you kind of think it's going to change i go for another like slow your roll slow the way you're thinking slow your talking and just talk to ryan and, and mm-hmm. that's kind of what we did you know you do kind of go into that putting a different cap on and, and, and trying to give some pearls of wisdom. But when you're just being yourself, they just fall, mate. You get so much more from it. So just do you, boo. Just do you. Yeah, mate. No, it's, it's so important. And you know what? I heard this a while back. I can't remember who said it. So don't quote me on this at all. But someone said, I think it's on a podcast. And they said, we're living our lives And when we have a conversation with someone, we feel that is the last time we're ever going to speak to that person. And yeah, obviously, like, we don't know what's around the corner and that possibly could be. But we're trying to get, say, everything off of our chest, out of our mind and tell them every single thing. Like, we're never going to see him again. Yeah. I'm sure I'll probably speak to you later. I'll probably speak to you at the end of the week. I'll speak to you. Do you know what I mean? So, like, we feel the need to get every single thing out. Like, just be yourself. Just speak. (laughs) Stop speaking from here. Start speaking from here, which is your heart, if you can't see it. Speak from your heart, and it comes across so much more different. So, Lee, I just want to say thank you, mate, so much for coming on today. Mate, listen, thanks for inviting me. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I forgot what they were like, you know what I mean? Um, Just a quick note. Mate, I never realised how such nice eyes you've got. Oh, thanks, mate. Thank you. A few people said that. Thank you. I'm thinking, like, this dude's got some really nice eyes, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, thank you, mate. Yeah, I don't know what that was. It sounded like a, a dog slash monkey thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was Frank, you know, when he given out his early warning system to the cat. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lee. Lee, seriously, mate. Seriously, I do really appreciate you. And um, but Lee, Welcome. for anyone to, say, anyone to say, listen to this today and has been impacted by anything that you've said, what's the best way that they could say, potentially reach out to you, follow your journey or connect with you in any way? Um, so you can obviously connect with me on here um, at Lee Anderson Coaching. I've got a website uh, at Lee and www.leeandersoncoaching.com. No, um, I'm just about to embark on something new as well. Um, so stay peeled for that because I just want to get the bits and pieces sorted and that'll be. Um, how else can you find me? Yeah, so just DM. Listen, I can't solve your problem per se, but I can help you solve your problems yourself. That sounded a bit cliche and dicky, didn't it? But what I mean is, is the fact that sometimes just talking about it helps you understand what it is. Yeah, man. I mean, again, that's so powerful. Like, nobody can fix anybody else ever. We're but not from broken. They... You know what I mean? No, we're not but... broken. People, people think we're broken, but we're not. We're just a little bit disjointed. Mm. Just confused, a little bit confused. Discombobulated. Yeah, good word. My friend Dale uses that if he's, he listens back to it. Discombobulated. That's true. That's all it is. We're discombobulated and we just need somebody from an outsider's point of view to just sit with us, listen and say, guide us in the right direction. So, Lee, thank you so yeah. much, mate, for coming on today. I've really You're enjoyed welcome. this episode. So have I, mate. So have I. <laughs>
<laughs> Listen, take care. Yeah. And I'll, um, I'll speak to you in a bit anyway, man. I'll speak to you yeah. soon. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Lee. Thanks for everybody for coming on as well. And we'll speak soon. Cheers, everybody. Bye.